Hey everyone, it's Justin again. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing sequences, a powerful new tool to add to your algebra toolbox. Five, four, three, two, one, let's have fun. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define a sequence and identify the terms of a sequence. You should also be able to write several terms of a sequence based on its formula. First, we'll define a sequence and discuss sequence formula notation. Then after, we'll do three examples of writing the terms of a sequence. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers. Sequences generally follow a pattern and usually continue forever. Here's a few examples of sequences. One, three, five, seven, nine. Can you identify the pattern? What would be the next number in this sequence? Well, the numbers are going up by two, so we expect the next number to be 11. How about this one? Seven, three, negative one, negative five, negative nine. What's the pattern and the next number this time? These numbers are going down by four, so we expect the next number to be negative 13. Let's do one more. Two, six, 18, 54. This pattern is different but try pausing the video to see if you can find out the next number. This pattern is multiplying by three. So our value will be 54 times three, which is 162. The first two sequences have a pattern of adding or subtracting the same value repeatedly. While we'll discuss this in a later lesson, these are called arithmetic sequences. The last one fits a pattern of multiplying or dividing the same value repeatedly. This is called a geometric sequence. For now though, all you need to know is that sequences usually have patterns. The terms in a sequence are named by their place in the sequence, often as an A with a subscript. For example, this term is A1, this term is A2, and so on and so on. You can also say a sub one, a sub two, and so on and so forth. In general, we use a sub n, or sometimes just a n, to represent the nth term in a sequence. We can also use a sub n minus one to represent a previous term, which we're gonna see in the examples here. Let's go back to the previous examples for a moment. Let's practice this kind of notation. Using our three sequences from earlier, determine the value of a4 in each sequence. Remember, a4 represents the fourth value in the sequence. So for the first sequence, the fourth term is seven. So a4 is equal to seven. Can you figure out the other two? Pause the video and give it a try. The second example has its fourth term as negative five. And the final example has a4 equal to 54. Now that we know what these components mean, we can use a sequence formula to find the values of the sequence. Write the first five terms of the following sequence. a sub n equals n over n plus two. This sequence has a typical formula where you have the nth term, a sub n, equal to something involving numbers and the variable n. Remember that first term is called a1. How might we find that? Well, all we have to do is substitute one for n. Then a1 is equal to one over one plus two, which is just one third. Try pausing the video and see if you can find a2. When we substitute two for n, we get two over two plus two, which is two over four. Wait, what? My answer isn't simplified? Well, I guess that can happen, so we get one half. All right, we're doing great. Can you find the next three terms? Pause the video and give it a try. For a three, we substitute three for n, giving us three fifths. For a four, we actually end up getting four over six when we substitute four for n, but let's just write that as two thirds. Finally, for n equals five, 
we get 5 over 7. Notice that we could really substitute any term that we want. We could even do a 50. Then a 50 would be 50 over 52, better written as 25 over 26. Here's your chance to give this a try. Given the sequence below, a sub n equals 3 to the n, find the first five terms. Pause the video and give it a try. If we substitute 1 for n, we get 3. If we substitute 2 for n, we get 9. For n equals 3, we get 27. For n equals 4, we get 81. And finally, for n equals 5, we get 243. These numbers are getting big fast. Let's try another example. Given the sequence below, a sub n equals 1 eighth times 2 to the n, find the value of a 17. The beauty of having a formula like this is that we can just substitute any value in for n. There's 17 here. Pause the video now and give it a try. Okay, let's substitute in n equals 17. Then a 17 equals 1 eighth times 2 to the 17th power. Wow, that is a big number. If you calculate 2 to the 17th, we get 131,072. We multiply that by 1 eighth, we get 16,384. Our answer is really big. We were able to get it with just a few steps. By the way, this formula is in what we would call the explicit form of a sequence. This form is very useful because we can substitute in any number we want and find that term in the sequence. You don't need to worry about that term yet, but we'll talk about it more in a future lesson. Let's do an example involving the a sub n minus 1 notation. Write the first five terms of the following sequence. Remember, a sub n minus 1 represents the previous term. When it appears, you'll need to be given a starting term, like this, a1. That is the first value in our sequence, so we should focus on a2. For a formula like this, you'll always find the next value by substituting in the previous value. So here's what a2 looks like. We'll need to substitute in a1 and then multiply that by negative 2. We'll use negative 1 fourth for a1, and now all we have to do is simplify. a2 is 1 half. So far, so good. Now, let's tackle a3. This time we left a blank in the formula. What do you think should go in that blank? The formula just needs us to put in the previous value. And that previous value is the one half that we just found. So let's simplify this to find that a3 is negative 1. We're almost done. There's two more terms to find. So pause the video now and give it a try. For a4, we again need to fill in the blank. We use our previous term, negative 1, to get that a4 is 2. Finally, for a5, we'll plug 2 into the formula to get negative 4. You might wonder how you could use this to find the 17th term like we did in the previous example. Truth be told, it's kind of hard. These formulas only let you go one step at a time. Oh, oh no, oh, I'm going right off the page. Oh, it would take a long time to get there. By the way, this formula is in what we would call the recursive form of a sequence. This form helps us write patterns super easily, like multiplying by negative 2 each time, but they are a pain to find a term far into the sequence. You don't need to use this term yet, but we're going to talk about it more in a future lesson. Here's another notation that can pop up. Remember that a sub n minus 1 represents the previous term, but you may encounter a sub n minus 2, which represents the term before that. Let's look at a sequence with its formula and make some comparisons. This time, we were given two starting values, which started off the sequence. So which term is a3? 
our third term is 10, and it must have come from the formula. 6 is the previous term, and 4 is the term before that. Oh, 6 plus 4 is 10. All this formula is saying is add the previous two terms to get the current one. So that is that work for a 4? Pause the video and find the calculation that gets 16. We add the two terms before 16, and 10 plus 6 equals 16. This was a little tricky to follow, don't worry. We're going to practice this more in the next lesson before you'll need to do any of these on your own. Now you can use sequences. Remember that the formula with numbers and the variable n lets you find any term, even if you don't know the term before it. The formula with a previous term requires that you go one step at a time. Next time, we'll study the Fibonacci sequence, an incredible recursive sequence that appears in nature. See you then. Hey, hey.